the Church of Christ on this World Communion Sunday. If you are here in Fellowship Hall or in a car, please raise your hand if you need a communion kit. And those watching on YouTube, remember to have your elements ready for later in the service. The deacons are sponsoring a healing service this Wednesday, weather provided, at Pine Island, with the rain date being the next day. We suggest that you come around 6 o'clock and the service will start about 6.30 p.m. We are a congregation in need of healing and we hope that this service will be meaningful to everyone. See this week's e-blast for a number to call if the weather is questionable. The Loads and Fishes Food Pantry was open yesterday and Chance reports 77 people were served with food and gift cards, but the cupboards are bare. The need increases every month, so please bring your contributions by on October 17th or bring them here when you come to worship. The men's group will be meeting this Saturday at 9 a.m. here in Fellowship Hall. The flea market's coming up on November 7th, was set up the three days prior. So speak to Shannon if you can volunteer for any of those days. Please join me now in the call to worship. Creator God, we are here together in hope. With community and creation. With neighbors near and far. With those known and new. With Christians across geography and across time. Together, together in hope. Let us worship. Our gathering hymn this morning is This Is My Song, and it was chosen by our soloist Pearl as appropriate for World Communion Sunday. So let us rise and sing This Is My Song. Sherry Raymond, Scott Harris, David Pulliam, Gail and Tom Colagro, Myrtle Helpers, Nancy McKenney, Ann Miller, Addie's son, Eric Wolf, Lori Rose, Carrie Haggerty, 
Kathy Scheibel, Baby Dakota, and comfort for the Callis family. We lift up prayers as election day draws near, asking that justice will prevail and that the process is accomplished in peace. We pray for all who struggle with COVID, including our president and others in positions of leadership. Bless all those working tirelessly on a vaccine and drugs which will combat this illness. O oh, great and loving God, who has created human beings for relationship, and who enters into relationship with all your people, we give you thanks for all those who make our lives interesting and full. Thank you for families who love us, friends who make us laugh, children who show us the delight of discovery, youth who remind us of the importance of asking questions, and adults who have much wisdom to share. We pray, O oh Lord, for those whose relationships are troubled, those who have no one in their lives to love them, those who live in homes where abuse or neglect reign. Teach all of us to seek relationships which are healthy and show us how to reflect your love to those around us. Amen. And now let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. You will notice in the first part, Paul is bragging about all his credentials when he was a persecutor of Christians. And then he flips into uh, the present day Paul. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on <clears throat> to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. May God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. A young stockbroker was opening his car door when a large truck rolled by. Before he realized what was happening, the truck ripped the door right off. My Lexus, he screamed.
screamed to my beautiful Lexus. A policeman who came on the scene chided the young stockbroker on being so wrapped up in material things. Forget about your Lexus, said the policeman. Can't you see that the truck ripped off your left arm? The stockbroker looked down and he screamed, my Rolex, my beautiful Rolex. <laughs> Paul is in Rome under house arrest, and he's writing a letter to friends in the church at Philippi, a church that he and Silas had founded about 10 years earlier. Philippi held both fond and bitter memories for Paul. At Philippi, Paul and Silas were flogged and in prison. They succeeded in starting a church, but at great cost to themselves. Now it's 10 years later. Paul is chained to a Roman guard day and night. He doesn't know when the unpredictable Roman emperor Nero will have him called out and put to death. And yet Paul writes this joyful and passionate letter to the Philippians. It's an amazing letter for a man who has experienced so much opposition and hardship. It's a letter brimming with hope and confidence. It also gives us insight into Paul's heart and soul during this critical time. So what does Paul want more than anything else as he possibly nears the end of his life in chains? Freedom? He doesn't say so. He wants to be like Christ. He may be executed at any moment. He may not ever see his friends or the churches he has started, but one passion fills his mind and heart. He wants to be like Jesus. This one thing consumed Paul and ultimately made him the second most influential person who ever lived after Christ himself. I want to know Christ. And here's an example of how great Paul's passion for Christ was. A Roman soldier was chained to Paul night and day. These soldiers were rotated on a regular basis, probably every six hours or so. What do you imagine Paul did during these hours of confinement? We know he did some writing, but what else? At least part of the time, he was talking to these young soldiers about their faith. We know this because the book of Philippians ends with these words. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. Christians in Caesar's household? Where do you suppose they came from? They came from this man Paul's irrepressible desire to share Christ. Theologian Paul Tillich once said that whatever our ultimate concern is, that is our God. Paul's ultimate concern was to be like Jesus. Can we say the same? One reason that we are not as effective in our lives as we could be is that we have never decided what is really important and focused on that one thing. We know what mattered most to Paul. So what is your first priority? Have you cleared away all the clutter in your life and focused on that which will really bring abundant life? Does your life have a purpose? Author Rick Warren made a lot of money writing a book on that topic. Could it be that most people have no idea why they are on earth? Motivational books claim that success and fulfillment belong to those who set and achieve their goals. Make a list of goals and then find a way to achieve them. That's the secret to happiness. The purpose-driven life is a life with meaning. When you find something meaningful to live for, a goal to strive for, it makes it much easier to live with a lot of the headaches of life. An article in Guidepost magazine tells the story of Robert Young, a successful businessman in Seattle, Washington. His main priorities were spending time with his wife and building up his fast-growing and successful business. Then Young read a newspaper article about extreme poverty among elderly Native Americans living on reservations. Something 
about this story touched Robert Young. He called the number listed in the paper to ask how he could help. Robert soon enlisted in an Adopt a Grandparent program. He was matched with a 78-year-old woman named Catherine Redfeather. Robert went to visit Catherine and was stunned by the poverty he saw all around him. Whole families were living in broken down cars. Plywood shacks passed for homes. Many of the elderly people couldn't afford even the basic necessities, much less medicine. Robert decided to build his new grandmother a house. He provided the materials, friends and neighbors on the reservation provided the labor. In two weeks' time, they had built Catherine Redfeather a new home. After this, Robert tried to return to his successful business, but his heart wasn't in it. He kept dreaming of helping other Native American people build their own homes. Finally, Robert Young sold his business and opened the Red Feather Development Group, an organization that designs and builds low-cost housing on Native American reservations. Robert Young did this out of compassion for these desperately poor people, but he also did it for himself. He couldn't go back to the boredom and the meaninglessness of his former life. Now his life had a purpose, a reason for getting out of bed in the morning. Our spirituality is an individual thing, and it is about what is at the core of our being. What is it that we live for? what makes us get out of bed each morning. In thinking about your spirituality, do you have someone for whom you would sacrifice your life? For those of you who are parents, this is a question that's easy to answer. Would you give your life for your child, grandchild, or great-grandchild? I'm betting that you would. Our first grandchild was born 21 years ago in Tampa while we were living in Connecticut. We had arranged time off from work and bought plane tickets to come down a couple weeks after the due date. <clears throat> but Matthew Ives came a little early, and so it seemed like forever before I could get my hands on him. I was chomping at the bit, and when the time finally came, I dashed into their house. Our son handed the baby to me, and I looked down and said, Matthew, I will step in front of a train for you. I don't know quite where that came from, but it expressed the intense love I had for him instantaneously. The person who is wrapped up in him or herself will never be really happy. Now that doesn't mean that you have to find a spouse or have children to find happiness. Many single people find uh, live quite satisfying lives, but almost without exception, it's because they have developed other relationships with friends, with co-workers, fellow church members. No one can live a spiritually healthy life without reaching out to someone else. Our lives are meant for community and fellowship. And that is why we are all so frustrated during this pandemic. We long to be together in worship and fellowship. Some of you have found such a relationship in Jesus Christ. You have found what Paul found, that the most satisfying relationship possible for human beings is a relationship with God. Most of us don't want to settle for a second-hand relationship either. We want to experience Christ's joy, his peace, his love for all people. An old man was talking about a conversation he had once with his grandfather. He said that coming home from school one spring afternoon, he found his grandfather sitting on the front porch. The boy proudly shared the somewhat lengthy information he had learned that day about our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. After allowing him to share the information, the grandfather said to him, Son, you definitely know more about Abraham Lincoln than I do. 
But son, he added with a gleam in his eyes, I actually knew Abraham Lincoln. The grandson had information, facts, about Lincoln, but the grandfather knew Lincoln personally. There is a difference between knowing about Christ and knowing him personally. I invite you to reflect on Christ's peace. Do you have that peace, a peace that comes from a first-hand faith? Paul did. His priorities were in order. This one thing I do, he puts the past behind him and presses on toward his goal, a relationship with Jesus. Do you have a purpose for your life? At this particular time, I have more than one. Maintaining relationships with my precious extended family members is extremely important. But I also find that I have another purpose for which I have a burning passion at this time. And it is to keep Spring Hill United Church of Christ alive and well. And I hope many of you feel that way too. I ask, it to, ask you to give it your prayerful consideration this week, asking yourself, so what can I do to help my church? Every e-blast contains pleas for volunteers of various kinds, from serving on the profile and search committees, to working on the flea market, to bringing in food for our neighbors in the community and the kids in the local schools. Even if you are housebound, you can pick up the phone and make calls to others who are hungry for contacts. And I can give you a list. The church needs your time, your skills, and your treasure more now than ever before. And you will be rewarded. It is by living in imitation of Christ that you get to know him best. Amen.
day that that was beautiful, just beautiful. This is a time in our service when we uh, think of our offerings. If you are here in the hall, there is a box in the back of the room for your offerings. If you are outside, uh, wave your hand out the window and an usher will pick it up. Uh, if you are at home, uh, you can send in a check or go to the website and you can see ways of contributing electronically. And now let us pray. Loving God, as Jesus made a few loaves and fish into a meal for thousands, multiply our offerings. Take these gifts we bring you as a token of our desire for oneness with creation and justice for all your people. Amen. For those of you who have the communion kits, uh, you might want to get those in your hand and maybe start peeling off that top uh, film to expose the wafer. Remembering that many of us are gathered remotely at many tables and are sharing bread and cup in a virtual communion, may we remember that this action is the ultimate symbol of unity. These tables are set and all of God's children are welcome. These tables are open and all of God's children receive grace, love, and hope. This welcome, this bounty, this experience of Christ's saving love is celebrated here at this table and all around the world. And now let us pray this prayer from Bangladesh. O Savior Christ, in whose way of life lies the secret of all life and the hopes of all the people, we pray for quiet courage to meet this hour. We did not choose to be born or to live in such an age, but let its problems challenge us, its discoveries exhilarate us, its injustices anger us, its possibilities inspire us, and its vigor renew us for your kingdom's sake. We ask you to bless this cup and this bread, that it may nourish us for the journey together in hope. Amen. It is through the broken bread that we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving and unison. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ, strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and ease, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sending hymn is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And in this, you will hear words that were in the scripture lesson for today. Let us rise and sing when I survey the wondrous cross.
May God grant you the eyes of Christ to perceive human need, Christ's hands to heal, and Christ's heart to love. Amen. Amen.